Caitlin and the next member of the zoo crew is done. So this is Yankee Poodle. Uh, she's a bit like the Wonder Woman character, I guess. Uh, very patriotic, red, white, and blue. Uh, she's got the flag all over her, stars in her fur. Um, this was fairly easy to do. Um, there are some things I'm not fully satisfied with, but I wanted to go ahead and get it done so I could actually work on the next uh, custom video, which actually is going to be coming up not too long after this one, probably about a week or so, because the next one is uh, Halloween themed and it's going to be for sale. So I want to get it up in time before October. Um, but anyway, but this is the newest one. And I think she came out fairly good. The only thing I really don't like, one, I wish her hair was a little bit round, rounder because she had a very big afro uh, style haircut. And also the mask doesn't look really good when you look straight onto her. Um, but overall, it was very easy and very simple. And I'm pretty satisfied with the result. I'm very satisfied with the way the fur looks and everything. So this looks pretty good and I'm glad I got a new member of the zoo crew. Now I don't know what's gonna when the next member of the zoo crew is gonna come. Um I know it's probably gonna be Alley Cat, the cat. Um because I don't have the pops yet for the duck or the eagle, I think are the last two I need to do. So, and I don't know their names, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I'm learning this as I go along as well. But uh, I'm very much looking forward to them. I don't know if they're going to be done by the time 2020 is over. It might go into 2021. Um, more than likely it is going to go into 2021, just to let y'all know. But I don't know when it's going to be yet as of right now. I have the Halloween one done, but I haven't gotten any. I haven't even started on the next pop yet, so that's going to come after that. So... I really don't know if it'll be in October or November, but it'll be eventually. But anyway, hope you guys enjoy, enjoy this. I know there are several people who are really loving the Zoo Crew series, and I think I know what series, if I do another series of, like, themed pops, I think I know what my next one's going to be after the Zoo Crew is wrapped up. Um, just depends on how many people are interested once I say it, but um, I'm not going to say it yet, but... Yeah, for everyone who is supporting this and watching it, I very much appreciate you. It's really awesome to see uh, a lot of people taking an interest in this, so thank you. But anyway, guys, I'll let you guys go on to the next rest of the video, which I have to film tonight, or I have to voice over tonight, so bad for me, good for you. <laughs> Enjoy the video, guys. Okay, so I'm going to start this video out by again apologizing for the buzzing sound because I still can't get rid of it. I'm sorry. But as you can see, I chose the body of Raven as Wonder Woman. So Raven from Teen Titans as Wonder Woman. It's even the Walmart exclusive one because frankly, I like the common version better. So I started off by cutting off her lasso. And then the head is Max from The Grinch That Stole Christmas from the 2018 uh, movie. So I cut off the lasso like you just saw and now you can see I'm dremeling away, sanding away the um, tuft of hair on top of Max's head because Yankee Poodle does have you know an afro but not necessarily like a faux hawk thing that this dog has going on. So that had to go. Now for the epoxy, the lasso left an indention uh, in the thigh of the body, so I used some epoxy to fill that in. And then I tried to bulk up the head for uh, the dog, because again, it's an afro. <laughs> and I just wanted to build it up and I used the epoxy. Uh, to do it. I didn't do it well. I probably should have made even more epoxy to cover it fully, but I didn't. Um, by the way, there's still some molding. I tried to cover up a little bit of the molding with the epoxy on the Wonder Woman body, because it doesn't completely match what is on Yankee Poodle. Um, but you'll see later on, it doesn't really matter. Um, it kind of blended in with the paint, so I'm, I'm actually very happy <laughs> that worked out, because I honestly didn't I, I was just doing like a mediocre attempt at trying to cover up some of the, like the top of her outfit and stuff. Um, 
But yeah, it didn't matter in the end, so good. Now it's time for me to pull out one of my favorite, honestly, but very rarely used uh, supplies. That is this snow text. You guys have seen me use this with uh, when I did a Funko Custom for my friend James Dieter, and also when I did the Burger King. Um, it's really good. Obviously, it's snow text. It's used for snow texture on winter scenes and stuff. But you can also use it for frizzy hair, or in this case, frizzy fur, like a poodle's fluff. I don't know. Fur, curls, whatever. I don't know. But anyway, so I'm applying this very generously all around the head. I'm putting a very a pretty thick layer on it as well. This stuff will take a few hours to dry. As it dries, it'll make it more of a spongier texture, but it will dry fully hard when given enough time. Uh, and it can be painted, obviously. The weird texture does. Uh, it can be hard to get into all the little nooks and crannies when painting, but it is possible. But the poodle's going to be white, so it doesn't really matter, which is why this was, stuff was absolutely perfect to use. Also, I forgot to mention, I made a little bitty tail out of the epoxy while I had it out. And uh, then I just dabbed some of that snow text on to make the little goof tail for it. And I super glued it to her butt, so... Yeah, that's how I made the tail. <laughs> to make her mask, I got the craft foam back out again. And sketched as good as I could the shape of her mask that's supposed to be on there. With pencil and then cut it out with uh, my exacto knife. Um, making the eye slits were harder because um, I couldn't trace it <laughs> as well um, as I could on a previous custom that I did with the mask on that I did not film. Um, but yeah, I decided to make a second one and then decided that I liked this one better. <laughs> Um, out of the two, it's still, you guys saw in the intro, it didn't come out perfect, but it came out good enough for me. <laughs> and while the super glue on the mask is drying to the face, I can start on the painting. Now, I apologize, for some reason, I was way out of frame on this. Like, I haven't been way out of frame on this for a while. I'm literally at the very edge of the frame, and then my hand is covering it the entire way. I am sorry. <laughs> But I use my just basic blue uh, colored paint for her uh, top here, her long sleeve top. And uh, you'll see later on, uh, it's on film, I'll talk about when we get here. But the bracelets and the molding for her outfit, again, just blend seamlessly in. Especially can, since you can't see it, then it's definitely seamless since my hand's blocking it. Oh, damn. Once the mask is perfectly um, dry, I start going in with some white paint because she has white fur. Because, um, again, she's a poodle. So, <laughs> I start painting everything white on the body. The legs on the body uh, is going to be painted white as well. But pretty much every spot on the head. Uh, I even go ahead and repaint the nose. Uh, I just color it in black in later. Um, now, would this have been easier to paint the head had the mask not been already attached? Yes. Is this a mistake I made? No. Because if you paint, if you paint something and then super glue something on top of it, you're super gluing it to the paint. And it's nowhere near as sturdy as it would be if it's glued right to the vinyl or the plastic of the figure. So that's why I glue the tail on to her butt first before painting, you know, the her body and it's why I paint I glued the mask on before painting the face. It makes it more secure so in case I drop it, which if memory serves, I think the tail did come unattached before the end of this somehow. I don't think it was ever caught on camera, but I'm pretty sure I did it. Um, but it's even, even though it's not perfect, it makes it a little bit more stable than it would be gluing it to the paint. Once all the fur was painted, meaning the legs, the hands, and the tail, uh, as well as the shirt and the boots blue, 
then I can go back in with the snow text. Now I tried to go back in with the dotting tool. As you can see here, um, it worked decent. because I was trying to use something that was smaller because it's such a tight space for the fur around the collar and the sleeves and the boots. Um, it says on the instructions on the side of this thing to actually apply it with a fluffy brush. No shit, because when you try it with something solid, it doesn't want to come off the damn off the damn brush or whatever you're using. It has to be something fluffy so that it can transfer easily. But this stuff, it's it is tricky to work with. I'll say that this is the trickiest time I've ever had to work with it. But anyway, because she has these tufts of fur again around her collar, around her sleeves, and on the top of her boots, I just went around with all this stuff to make that fur texture just like I did for the head. And that's one reason why I said you won't really notice the molding of Wonder Woman's outfit or Raven's outfit underneath because the tuft of fur around her wrists pretty much cover the bracelets completely. And then the tuft around the collar plus the decoration that's going to come, come to her uh, shirt, you don't really notice the molding. So it's a really cool way to play around with paint and texture um, to hide what's underneath it so it's not as eye-catching. It's still there, you can still see it, but it's not the first thing that people are going to zero in on when they look at it. And that's one of the best things about, again, just playing around with different textures and stuff. And it's just kind of really fun. And finally, a little bit more color goes on <laughs> through the mask, so it's not just all looking like a ghost dog, <laughs> finally. Um, but you can see it's the same blue as her outfit. I also believe, I can't really tell in the footage, honestly, but I think this is also where I painted the belt white. Um, I don't know if I fully painted the belt in the video, but... And I don't review the footage until I'm actually sitting down to do this in real time. So, I don't know, but the belt is white with a silver buckle. And that one does still have the same molding as Wonder Woman's belt. It's probably the most noticeable if you compare the picture of Yankee Doodle and my figure of her has the most distinction, but I honestly didn't care. It still looked fine <laughs> with the pointed belt buckle. I don't really care. But yeah, I was trying to be very, very careful so I didn't have to go in and repaint a ton on the white head again. So I was being very careful at this stage. So Yankee Poodle is wearing some sort of weird headband that has no band to it. <laughs> I don't know. It's just a whole bunch of loose red stars surrounding her head. I don't know. But I had this uh, star-shaped confetti, pretty much. Glitter, whatever way you want to call it. Uh, so I just picked out all the red ones, which took a minute, <laughs> and set it aside. And you can see here, I'm just dabbing. I put a little bit of super glue onto my palette. I'm just dabbing it around and very carefully trying not to get the glue on my fingers. One at a time, I'm just grabbing these things, trying to separate them, and then sticking it on to the head. Um, I did space it out very weirdly uh, at first, so I did go back in after it. So it is going to be a bit more condensed in the final product than what you guys are seeing here now. Um, but yeah, it took a little bit of time because I was really trying not to super glue my fingers again. <laughs> So, remember back when I said that that one image was way out of frame? Yeah, that continued. So, the very last of this bit was filmed way out of frame, and it just, no, I didn't look good at all. Um, but as you can see, I painted the bottom of her outfit red, and then I finished off uh, the head with painting the eyes back, where I painted over it with the white, the eyebrows black, and the nose black, and then... Stuck the head on the body, and there we go. So, a couple coats of primer, or a couple coats of sealant, rather, and it's good. Uh, also, she doesn't stand that well on her own. Um, so, spun her manually there. And uh, if anyone watched the last Zoo Crew video, you know what's wrong with the picture, the group picture this time. But anyway, it was taken before I edited the last one, okay? But 
didn't feel like taking it again. But, but anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Remember, like I said in the beginning, there is going to be another custom video out coming very, very soon. Because I do want to get that pop up on my Etsy prior to October. Um, so probably in the next week or so, you'll be seeing another uh, custom video up on the channel. Um, also, I know that, I don't know when it's going to be, but I know the next Zoo Crew member is going to be the cat, Alley Cat, like I said. Because um, she's the one that I have the pops for. Also, I just now realized this was the first female character I've ever done on my channel. The first couple pops I did were actually female characters, but of the two years that I've been doing custom videos for YouTube, I haven't done a female character, or at least in pop form, uh, till now. So it was really cool to finally do a female character, and I hope you guys like it. Again, I know that some of you guys really love this and support this, and I very much appreciate you guys, and Thank you all so much for watching, and remember, like always, it's a community and not a competition. I'll see y'all later. Bye.